Hello, in this video we are going to discuss about parental root of drug administration that is another important rule in pharmacology. So here per means around entire means gastrointestinal. So that means the drug which has to be administered has nothing to do with GIT or it belongs to outside GIT. When we administer any drug by means of IV administration or parental root that shows that drug directly goes into the systemic circulation and it has nothing to absorb or nothing to do in the gastrointestinal tract that means drugs in, in drug is injected directly into the blood circulation or systemic circulation then we have type of parental root the number one is the intravenous the most important by which we mean administration into the vein then intramuscular into the muscles then subcutaneous into the under the skin then we have intradermal that means into the skin intraperitoneal IP which means the drug into the peritoneum then we have intraarterial uh, uh, which means into the arteries then we have intrathecal that shows spinal fluid then we have intraspinal which means to be administered into the spinal cord column then we have intrasynovel that means joint fluid area then we have intraarticular that means injection into the joints now we will discuss about intravenous root it is the root or administration of the drug into the systemic circulation directly through the vein. Then we have two base main types. The first one is the bolus and second one is the infusion. I have written over here the small circle and the larger circle. So bolus means drugs injected into the vein over a short period of the time for the small volume. So this small circle means small volume and drugs injected into the blood or into the vein over a longer period of the time. For larger volume are administered so that's why I have made a larger circle for infusion so here is another graphical representation big one means infusion and the smaller one means bolus so now you people can understand the basics of bolus and infusion difference then we have advantages of IV root rapid onset of the action the first one the first the merit or the advantage of the IV root then we have it is the root of emergency means choice of root in a case of emergency drug that are not effective orally drugs that are destroyed in GIT like we are having insulin it avoids degradation of the drugs in the liver which is termed as first pass effect it is best for unconscious patients irritant drugs can be administered by this root larger volume can be injected by this root then we have disadvantages of IV root. By mean disadvantages, we mean that skilled staff or personnel is required for administration of the drug means no one can administer him or herself by using this route. Once administered, it is difficult to reverse because drug gain entry into the blood. So it is very difficult to reverse it. It is expensive, it is painful. It is if injected too fast, it may drop blood pressure. Self-medication is impossible in this case. Then we have intramuscular so I am injection drugs into the muscle I am injections of the drug into the muscle just beneath the subcutaneous layer three types of the drug can be administered by this route the number one is aqueous oleaginous solution or suspension of the drugs uh, relative rapid onset of the action generally the action or the onset of the action starts 30 minutes later the rate of absorption depend on formulation this is the important point which I want to discuss earlier but here is the explanation rate of absorption depend on formulation mean formulation means dosage form of the drug in some books there is written depot preparation so do not confuse about depot preparation what are these these are oil based preparations and in some books there is written aqua solution or water based so both are the same so when we have oil based preparations formulations or depot preparations or formulation the absorption is slow then we have water based solutions or water based or aqua solutions means when we are having this type of the nature or the formulation the absorption is fast in this case now we have site of actions for intramuscular that is upper arm thighs and buttocks obviously there are some certain drawbacks for IM injections as well they are painful non-reversible drug precipitate at the site of the action larger volume cannot be administered in this case abscess formation and self-administration is not possible in this case then we have subcutaneous 
also known as SC or SQ root of administration. This is the root in which comes or which meant below or under the skin or between the dermis and the muscle. The plus point or the main point is the very small amount that is 2 ml or less than 2 ml injected via the this root. So by means of subcutaneous we mean subcutaneous means a layer or tissue that composed of the fatty layer that is under the skin which is less vascular in nature and meant to be absorbed slowly. Self medication is the key in this route because like you people might have heard the in injection of the insulin which is taken by the patient him or herself directly under the thighs or the abdomen area so that that shows that clearly shows that it is um, the self administration is possible in this route here is again the representation self administration is possible in case of insulin okay then we have intradermal injections intradermal route of administration by means intradermal we means it is the administration of a drug or substance which is superficially in nature means a drug can be administered superficially into the dermis of the skin then we have intraperitoneal by intraperitoneal we means injection of a drug or a substance into the body cavity or into the peritoneum then we have intra arterial injection or intra intra arterial route of administration that means the injection or administration of a drug or substance directly into the arteries then we have intrathecal route of administration intrathecal administration for drugs or substance into the sub space which ultimately lead to the reaches to the cerebrospinal fluid CSF then we have intraspinal administration uh, intraspinal administration of a drug into the sp into the spinal cord column then we have intrasynovial or root of administration uh, that means a drug which has to be administered within the synovial sac of joint then we have intraarticular that means administration of a drug into the joint directly into the joint so i hope this makes sense this is all about the parental route of drug administration i hope uh, you people understand this kindly subscribe us for more videos thank you for watching us thank you all of this